good morning again. Uh, I am getting ready to paint the scrap launcher for the um, Ogre Kingdom's army that I'm working on. And uh, I think to start with, I'm going to do this little beast of burden here. He's already got the uh, Noblar on board. Uh, I'm going to start with a base coat of Sheridan, Cher Sheridan granite. Uh, and I'll, can, I'm going to actually try to walk through each of the steps as I do them. So uh, this is going to be my base uh, fur, fur color here. And when that's done, I'll come back and we'll talk about what the next step is. So here we go. This may be a little bit longer video. Okay, so now I have a nice uh, coat of... Uh, Cheridon granite drying on the beast, and while that dries, I'm going to work on the wheels. Um, I have put together the scrap launcher into little sub assemblies, some of which are still the primer is still drying, so I can actually get at everything. So the wheels, I've seen these painted as as wooden wheels, but to my eye, these are grindstones. So I'm going to do them in stone. And I wanted to do warm grays instead of cool grays, so uh, Deneb Stone is going to be my base coat of choice in this case. So I'm going to go do that, and then I will come back. Alright, with the stone wheels drying, I'm going to move on to this chest. And I'm thinking a nice red leather would be, not, would be good. I'm going to use P3 Bloodstone, uh, which I really like. It's a nice nice ruddy brown color. So I'm going to go do that and uh, then I'll be back. Okay, next thing on the list is going to be the wood. Uh, so that's like this barrel and the uh, chassis of the vehicle, other bits. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, a dark brown, so I'm going to base them with Calvin brown, which uh, when combined with the dark brown wash Devlin mud uh, makes a really nice rich brown color so that's what I'm doing and uh, I think when I'm done base coating that I'll probably be able to come back to this guy because then he should be dry by then okay I'm back to the beast and I think my next step here is uh, a little dry brush. Uh, I've mixed up a mixture of these two colors uh, to lighten the base coat. And uh, again, it's going to be a gray, but it's going to be more of a more of a, a warm gray. And I will probably do this in a couple of different steps to get it to where I want it to go. So here is the base, and next time you see it, I'll have the first dry brush coat on. So let me go do that, and I will be back. So here we have the colors that I used for the, uh, the dry brushes. Um, this one here uh, started with the granite color, uh, and then I added the denim stone to it. This one, I actually started with denim stone and added a little granite to it. So um, this one actually has been mixed uh, a few times to get a few layers. I think this is about, uh, I'm going to say, four layers. It doesn't take long. I mean, if, if there was a piece that was tailor-made for dry brushing, this is it. And uh, I, I can't think of a, another way to really do this right. <laughs> So uh, at this point, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the straps. Just going to do a base coat on the straps and the skin tone. I haven't actually decided what I was going to base the, the skin with yet, but probably a um, probably a yellowy tan. Uh, I think actually uh, P3 has a color called Beast Hide that would probably be perfect. So I, I'll take a look at that. And, uh, and then I'll come back and we'll see where we are. Okay, it looks like all of the, well, okay, most of the base coating is done. Uh, at, or I should say all of it for 
the flesh and fur. Um, I did end up using Beast Hide for the Beast Hide, uh, and I used Blood Tracker Brown for the leather. And I think at this point I'm going to start doing some washes to darken those things up. And I still need to put a, uh, a base coat, and I'll probably use the granite again on the uh, chains and a base coat on the horns and the horns I'll probably start with a uh, with Hammerfall khaki which is another P3 color uh, as many of you know I use a lot of P3 in my painting um, so I think that is going to be the next step I really like how the um, the patchy the patchy fur makes the guy look uh, worn and weather beaten. So anyway, I need to run off and uh, take care of this, these next steps and then I'll come back. Alright, so uh, I put some bolt gun metal onto the spiky bits. Uh, I darkened up the chains in preparation of uh, some metallic on those. I actually made a wash uh, for the flesh mixing the uh, beast hide with the granite color and again <clears throat> this is going to tie the uh, the kind of skin and fur together a little bit by introducing some of the fur color into the skin um, what else did I do that's a kind of it oh, I did some touch up uh, and I have a little bit more to let dry here oh I can't remember now if I'd uh, <laughs> if I'd painted the uh, base coated the teeth and horns yet. Well, so I base coated the teeth and horns, and that is using the uh, Hammerfall khaki uh, from P3. So I'm gonna let that wash dry so I don't get my fingers all over it, and I think I'm gonna use the Hammerfall khaki on these horns as well, and then I'll come back to the beast again. So why don't I go do that, and I will return. So after uh, putting the base coat on these pieces, I uh, went ahead and washed the wood, and I was planning to use uh, Devlin mud, but uh, it turns out I'm out, <laughs> which, you know, these things happen sometimes. Uh, so instead what I decided to do is I, I built my own wash and I used uh, the, the medium that comes with that brush set that they released just before Christmas and a little bit of, uh, where is it? Umbral Umber, I can't find the paint now, but anyway, Umbral Umber from uh, P3, which is their dark brown, and uh, just created a wash, and now I'm waiting for that to dry. Um, but speaking of this medium, and I've mentioned this in other videos before, but if you haven't seen any of my other videos, let me, let me tell you a little bit. This came with that brush set, the gift set that they came out with before Christmas, and uh, while the brushes are okay, this medium is awesome. And this, and I'm almost out, as you can see. Um, this is essentially a pigment-free version of their wash. So whatever the medium is that is in their wash, this is it. And you can make washes with this, and they work just as well as the washes that that uh, come pre-packaged from Games Workshop. So um, I've been begging my rep at Games Workshop to. Um, convince somebody over there that they need to release this stuff outside of that stupid gift set because nobody wants to spend $50 for two bottles of medium. Um, and here's the thing. The rumor that I heard is that uh, when Games Workshop changes their paint line come spring, that that medium is going to be a part of the new line, which makes me very, very happy. Um, and just for those of you paying attention and listening, the other things I've heard is that the bottles are going to be bigger. Uh, we're going to see more colors. 
um, but I think the formula is supposed to stay the same. So if you're concerned that you know your favorite color is going to go away and the paints are going to act all different, don't worry about that because it sounds like all the paints that are currently there are going to be there and you're just going to get more of them. So it's kind of an interesting thing and we'll see if that rumor pans out and proved to be true. But I got to tell you, my source on this is pretty good, so we'll see. Uh, anyway, moving on, I think the next thing I'm going to do is get back to these wheels. Um, as you might have noticed, I jump around a bit, but uh, I need to make a wash for these, and I think, uh, I don't want to go too dark, but I'm going to use the denim stone, and uh, you know what, I might use the umbral umber to darken that up, and oh, maybe not, maybe I'll use the granite, because I do want this to be a gray, I don't want it to be a brown, and uh, and I'll do that. So I think that's what's going to be the denim stone and granite uh, mixed with some of that medium and I'll do my wash and then I'll come back. So uh, the the wash on these giant tusks uh, I actually built using uh, a Liquitex medium and varnish instead of the other stuff, the Citadel stuff, because since I'm running out of Citadel and it looks like it's going to be months before I can get any more, I figured I'd go ahead and get used to using other things. Uh, it worked out okay. I'm not as happy with it as I am with the other stuff, but uh, it still needs to dry. And then I'll have to go back and do some highlighting on that. So I also did another little bit of wash on the wheels and I put the base coat back on the chains and I'm happy with how those are coming. Um, I also used the last bit of uh, Devlin Mud Wash to wash down the harness here and uh, so that's drying. Also uh, washed around the chain even though I haven't actually put the uh, metallic on that yet. In addition, uh, I did a scorch brown wash over the leather on the chest. And since I had the scorch brown out, I did uh, a base coat of scorch brown on the metal jaw thingy. Uh, this is gonna be mostly rusted and you know, kind of scraped up and bits of metallic showing through. Uh, and the wash that I did on the wood is all drying, and that actually looks really nice. Very happy with uh, with the results there, as I thought I would be. Still drying though. And so, what's next? That is a good question because so many things are drying. I think the chest may be the only thing that isn't currently drying right now. So I might work on the metal straps on that. So why don't I get to it? So I've been kind of uh, skipping around while not shooting video. I uh, worked on the little scrap pile, um, which uh, is not quite done, but I've been making sure to get you know a number of different colors into it because I didn't want to just do a you know metallic dry brush over the top of it because there's a lot of different things in there. And, you want it to look more like a scrap pile as opposed to you know a single solid mass. So that's coming along. Um, did some washes on the uh, sort of chassis, and I put the wheels on because I kind of wanted to see how that looked. I really like the contrast of the stone wheels on the wood chassis, and I started working on this piece and rusting it up and I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on how I did this kind of at the end unfortunately but so as you might remember I started with a base coat of uh, scorch brown over the black uh, then I stippled um, dark flesh over that and uh, now I'm stippling orange to get the uh, lighter effect and I'm using Vallejo Orange Fire, which is the same as um, the similar Citadel color. And stippling just sort of works like this. You know, you're kind of punching at your piece 
with your brush and as you can see this is a pretty nasty brush but I keep it around for stuff like this and uh, your stipple will really give a nice mottled effect to the rust and really make it look realistic and it's it's almost like doing a dry brush in that you when you put paint on the brush you want to get most of it off because if you don't it'll splotch and you don't want it to be too thick because then it just looks like paint I actually still have a little bit too much on there but uh, yeah you can stipple that down and you can already see the difference between is not done and done and because I have you know two layers of stippling going on for the first layer being the dark flesh and then the second layer being the orange um, you end up with a really nice mix of color nice layering of color which is uh, quite realistic yes I use my thumb as a palette and as a <laughs> brush cleaning tool so since this is the backside, I'm not too worried about this, but um, you know, you want to you want to kind of make it even um, without making it too even. You want it to be uh, you want it to be a little blotchy, but you don't want it to build up too much in one spot. So there, and then we've got the that part there. I'm going to do a little bit more on this. And then I want to go back uh, and chip up the, uh, the rust with metallic. Now the whole idea here being, with that being that uh, um, if you look at anything that's been, you know, weathered metal, unless it's just sitting doing nothing, uh, the rust only builds up in the areas where it doesn't touch anything. So any part that's going to scrape, anything that protrudes, is likely to get dinged and nicked and uh, the rust is going to get chipped and flaked and, and maybe not even build up. So uh, those are the areas that you're going to want to concentrate on with your metallic color. And I'm going to do that, um, but not here because I, I want to actually spend, uh, pay a little more attention to what I'm doing when I do that. So I will come back and show you how that turned out. And there it is. Um, essentially what I did was, um, well, kind of the same kind of stippling that I did with the rust, but I also did a little dry brushing. Um, mostly concentrated on the edges, a little bit where these little scrapes were, some more on the bottom, not very much at all on the back side. Um, and then I did another layer of the uh, orange rust. And again, because it's, you know, things get scraped, things rust, get scraped again, you know, you're going to have some variation. So um, that part is done. I just need to do the. Um, the edge pieces there, the end kind of uh, holder pieces, and probably do those in brass, and then I'll uh, then I'll come back. All right, so using the same techniques that I showed you on that uh, big metal piece, I've been working on the tusks and the metal on them. So as you can see, they are rusty and beaten and uh, pretty cool looking I think. Uh, I also did, as I mentioned I was going to do, the end pieces and uh, I've essentially done brass with a patina on both sides. And what else? Uh, I've been going back in and, and taking care of some of the little details on the chassis that I hadn't done yet. Uh, these straps, getting those painted. Uh, same thing, straps on the uh, tusk. 
getting some paint on the bits in the barrel and uh, it's really starting to come together um, but really everything needs to be painted before it can be assembled because it all sort of comes together at once so uh, yeah so I'm gonna get back to it and I'm not sure exactly where I'm going next but uh, you know, there's so many little things that need to get done. I think I'm going to go back to the beastie. I think I'll work on his uh, horns and teeth and stuff. All right, so that's next. See you in a bit. I started doing some of that a little bit earlier, and... Uh, uh, discovered that um, that chest that I painted earlier uh, has actually nowhere to go because of other decisions that I made when building it specifically. Uh, I put this uh, shield on the back and so there's nowhere to mount that chest. So I got this stray chest that I might just put on the base or something. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> But uh, overall, this is uh, getting close to done. Like, I'll finish those tension straps, um, finish those up, and then I'm going to do a test fitting, and uh, then I th think it's just touch up bits and pieces, and it will be done. Um, then it'll be on to doing the various Noblar. They don't take too long. Kind of fun little guys. This guy actually gets mounted to there, I believe. And, and then there's another one uh, for the other side. Kind of cool. Uh, and there's a there's a pilot, I think, or at least a guy that could be sitting in the front and. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, so that's it for now, and I will come back a little later. And there it is. Uh, again, this is just a test fit, not the final. Um, but I do believe this is where I'm going to end this video uh, for now, because before I assemble this and finalize it, um, and make it completely done, I'm going to do the knoblars, the rest of the knoblars, and I don't think that's worth going through and doing more videos on for the moment. Um, but at least you get to see the basics of what this thing looks like. I obviously still haven't put these on because those don't have a uh, uh, an easy way to test fit. They, they're going to go in probably last, even after I put the knoblars on. Um, so... There it is. And hey, thanks for uh, sticking sticking through this, uh, what is probably going to end up being my longest video ever. And uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it useful. And I will talk to you all later.